So as you can see, the color is initialized, and now let's wait for the sign. Okay, let's step on pink. So the game is pretty self-explanatory. So we wait until there's one player left, which is probably going to take a while, because I think I kind of made the game too easy, but you can kind of see how this game works. Welcome back, guys, to a new Roblox Studio tutorial. Today, we'll continue our color block game. So what we're going to do now is make a round system implemented into the game. And we'll do that by actually using our own model from the previous tutorial, which is the round system model. Um, the only difference now is we're going to implement this color block game into the round system. So we're going to modify the scripts, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's go to one of our models. So let's do the smart round system. Uh, should be this one right here. I'll leave it in the description. Right. So we have the script. has all the stuff inside. So let's put these two teams into teams. Like that. Ungroup and replicate the storage. Control U. Ungroup and storage UI. Control U. Or you can also do right click ungroup. Alright. So. Ungroup like that. So these are the map spawn and this is the lobby spawn this is the values and then we'll put this in server script service right let's rename this the round script right we don't need instructions this is outdated and i think this is okay this is the stats let's rename the stats and we'll use this to count the wins right and this was our color block game from the previous tutorial, which is what we'll kind of replace. So first thing we need to do, um, we're going to make a module script so we can access these functions like colors in it uh, from external scripts like the round script. All right. And we'll talk about this later. So what we'll do is we can make a module script. Let's make it in replicated storage if you want. And let's call this color blocks. All right. Color blocks. So let's rename the module too. Doesn't really matter, but we'll do that. So now uh, what we'll do is replace some of the stuff here. So first of all is the colors in it. Um, now the syntax to do this is color blocks. And then we can name the function anything. So let's name this. Let's name it the same thing here. So colors in it. Colors in it. And then we'll uh, set this to a function. Brackets like this and enter like that. So now we made a function inside this model. And then we're pretty much all we're going to do is copy like the stuff inside this function. The code inside this function. And so basically we made a function which is identical to what we have here. So now we're done with that. And we can call this from external scripts. Now we also need uh, to make the table again. So what we can do instead. Um, and we also need the variables. So let's also copy these variables as well. All right. And colors will, uh, instead of copying this table directly, we'll do the same thing. So we'll make a table inside this module. Let's call this color blocks and then there'll be a table let's call this also colors i'm going to set this to a table and then this will have all the components inside here the reason we do this is so we can also access this from external scripts as well just like this function and then it's time to do colors we'll do color blocks colors like this all right so this would refer to this would refer to this table right here as this one okay so we're pretty much done with the module script so the reason why we do this is so we can access this from external scripts like the round script which is what we're going to do next so to require this 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 dependency uh we'll do let's make this named uh color blocks and then set this We'll do require game that replicate storage that color blocks, which is the module script we made. Oh, this would refer this would refer to this entire module. 
Alright. Pretty good. So what we have here... I explained how this works. But I'm going to explain it briefly, just so you know how this works. So, the first thing that happens is waits for a minimum amount of players. So, in this case, it would be two. Um, and then this is the intermission loop. So it will count down, then once it counts down, the round will start. Alright. And then once the round will start, it will have a countdown for when the round will end. Now, in our case, we don't want the round to end after a certain amount of seconds. We want the round to end when there's at least uh, one player left or no players left. So in this case, what we'll do, instead of making a for loop, we'll do a while loop. So we'll do while true do All right let's replace that and it's basically the same thing uh hold a minute uh, yeah. i will update some of this because these are also outdated but basically what you have here uh let me check okay if we collapse all of this we'll wait one so this will still uh loop for every one second and it will check the amount of players. And there's a small underline here, so we don't uh, need this. We'll replace the status.value to um, anything you want, but I'll do it like uh, step on the color in the color block matching the sign, like that. The description of the game. All right. So in this case, it will loop forever until there's one player left. And if there's one or zero players left, it would either say everyone has died or someone has won the game. Now, I also realized um, it's probably not a, the best way to do it. So what we can do instead of uh, filling this playing table with the player names, we'll do we'll fill it with the actual player object. And so when we have that, we can actually directly access the player. We don't have to look for it. So instead of doing all of this, let's copy this, remove all of this. And so player dot one would be the object. So we'll do dot name like that. And then copy this playing that one. That leader size that wins that value. And we already made a wins value in the stats script right here. Right inside in the side of leader stats. So this is pretty, pretty good. All right. This looks good. All right. So now we have the loop. Now let's actually make it work uh, with the color block while loop we made in the script. So this is the while loop for the color block uh, to keep on changing the assigned color, the chosen color. Uh, and we don't really need these anymore because we're not going to really use the script anymore. We're going to use this part of the code in the uh, round script. Uh, we also need this, but well, I'm going to copy this later. So, now let's go on here in round.change. So when the, run, the round that value is true, oops, the round that value is true, we're going to teleport all the players. All right, so, like this. And after this, oops, uh, let's not put this in the while loop. So after we teleport all the players, then we can start the round. So we'll do while wait for do. And then we'll also need to uh, declare these variables as well. So let's put this here. Copy this. And in the case of colors, we'll also do the same thing. So color blocks that colors. Colors. which is the colors in this module script right here. All right. Now, what we wanna do now is we're gonna need to break out of this once there's a winner found. So to do that, we're gonna make a variable right here called winner found. Set this to false. And so this is gonna be true once there's a winner. All right. Or honestly, instead of that, we can also we can just do a game ended. Game ended. 
uh, game edit equals false. Okay, so whenever there's a chance, uh, there uh, there's a, a condition where the game ends, we'll set this to true. Game ended equals true. Same with this. Game ended equals true. Then we'll set this back to false when the new round starts. So we'll do game ended equals false. So now on the while on the while condition we'll also include wait for and not game ended. So we'll make sure the game hasn't ended uh, to continue this uh, loop for the for the choosing colors. Okay. And then we just need this. Uh, and I think this is just to initialize, so we'll do this. So this is before the round starts. We'll set the sign to gray color. Okay. So this looks good so far. And I think one last thing I need to do is put a wait. Uh, because a lot of people had some issues with the, with the game. Uh immediately saying everyone has died right when the round starts i think you need to wait one for all the players to uh teleport and have their teams change to the playing team uh right here so make sure all the players have switched and then we'll uh go through this while loop so we just need to wait a little bit for all the players to have changed teams and then start um Otherwise, yeah, it would probably cause this error. Uh, so let's make sure to make wait one right after the round has started, just to give some time. I think now, if I um, so let's actually make the required plays one just to test on myself, and then we'll see what happens right now. Oh, oh, I forgot. Um, I almost forgot. Yeah, we do need a base plate. So obviously, let's make a small little base plate uh i don't know let's make this blue or something i don't know so this is the lobby spawn let's put this let's put this here and then the map spawn obviously we need to make this on top of this okay and other than that i don't think there's anything else to do we're pretty much done so let's actually, uh, actually, let's put the spawn location here. Oh wait, I forgot to make me make this anchored. Oops, my bad. These should be anchored as well. And last thing I almost forgot to do is to initialize the actual color blocks for the grid. So we're gonna actually call this function now. And pretty simple, just do color blocks, colors in it. And we're pretty much good to go. Uh, now let's actually test this. Now it should automatically give me the win, uh, but we're gonna see how this works anyways. All right, game starts. There we go. Recover has won the game and it gives us one win. Pretty simple. Now I didn't start the round because I won anyways before uh, the loop could even run. But let's actually test this with uh, multiple people. So let's actually wait for the round to start. Let's wait for the round to start. So as you can see, the color is initialized and now let's wait for the sign. Okay, let's step on pink. So the game is pretty self-explanatory. So we wait until there's one player left, which is probably going to take a while, because I think I kind of made the game too easy, but you can kind of see how this game works. Pretty fun to play with your friends. Alright. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, pretty simple tutorial. If you guys enjoyed 
leave a subscribe and a like uh, and a comment for what you want next. And join our Discord if you want. Uh, if you want to be in our videos in the future. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, damn.